This morning we have Don McDonough with us here this morning. He says his address is Schwanksville, but he lives more in Skipack. And beyond that, I'll let him tell you as much as he wants to tell you about himself. Um, his message this morning is entitled Kingdom Chaos, and he has asked me to le read a passage from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. That's Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. That is why I tell you, that is why I tell you not to worry about every, everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Lord's blessings to you, Don, as you bring us his word. Thanks, Roland. Here, um, and uh, this is the first time I've been here where there's people here, so this is a real pleasure <laughs> to see these smiling faces. Wayne Nelson, what a, what a great guy. Um, I say I've known him for quite a few years, and. Uh, knew how much he loved this church and how much he loves you guys. So it's a real uh, honor for me to be here. Uh, my name is Don McDonough. Um, I was ordained by the Springmount Congregation back in 2005. I worked with a guy named Michael King. Uh, we did a lot of community outreach. Um, and from that, we kind of branched off and did uh, a community outreach called Arise. Um, Operated pretty good until COVID hit because our whole uh, premise was to work around uh, a meal and uh, food and getting together. So we're kind of trying to figure things out now how we regroup, but we still are very much connected. And I do a, an awful lot of work in the community with, uh, well, it's kind of fun now. I do a lot of weddings of kids we had in vacation Bible school. So I've just been really enjoying that. Uh, I've always been a bivocational pastor, which means uh, I don't get my financial uh, sustenance from the church, which I really enjoy that. Uh, I'm a horticulturalist, um, not a farmer quite like Rowan, but uh, grow plants in a greenhouse, and it's a place to stay out of today. In fact, uh, we have a parrot that lives in the greenhouse, and she let me know last night it was time to move her to a cooler spot. She was saying help, and she does say that. help. <laughs> uh, some other things about me. Uh, my wife and I, we have six children, and right now we have 13 grandchildren. Uh, and Debbie would, wanted to be with me here today, but uh, last night we had a, an impromptu sleepover uh, with grandchildren and some other children that call us Grammy and Pop. Um, 
So our house is pretty crazy, and when I left this morning, it was chaotic. And I'm driving here, and I'm thinking, oh good, that's exactly what I didn't want to talk about today. Chaos. We live in a chaotic world. And I don't think that I need to tell you how nutty it is, because you could all come up here and tell your own stories. But we live in a chaotic world. And maybe that's not so unusual, because I think chaos is something that has quite a history. If you even look when God created the, the earth, you know, it was formless, it was chaotic. And he said the seas were just crazy. But God has such a way of bringing order out of chaos. And it's just amazing how he brought everything together. The land, the sea, the skies, the stars, the universe. But, and I'm going to warn you this right now, because we just had a Sunday school class that was leading up to this sermon, which gave me goosebumps. Um, so I'm kind of writing some of this as I'm going in my head now. But one of the things we talked about, which I just now thought about, is how amazing that God created all this, but he needed people. He needed men and women, to do some of his work, to make this all happen. And even in creation, what's one of the first things he wanted man to do was to start to organize things, start to name, name the animals and name the plants. And again, I'm a horticulturalist by trade, and a lot of my brain is filled with useless information, and part of that is the plant kingdom the different Latin names of the plants. I can't remember my cell phone number, but I could tell you almost every Latin name of every plant here. Maybe it's useless, I don't know. But God used us to start getting this thing together, and he's done it through history. You look at Abraham, 75 years old. God comes to him and says, I want you to leave the land that you're familiar with and go off. And, and Hebrews explains it this way. He said, Abraham was going, not knowing where he was going. So he went from a place that he knew into confusion. But it was God's confusion. And you saw through Abraham how God worked to bring order and uh, just put this whole thing together. I thought about this a lot, thinking that Abraham was 75. I do a lot of work in, in nursing homes. If you've been to Doc Woods and the Doc, uh, we put all the interior plants in there and we maintain the plants there. I also preach there on a regular basis and I told these guys back there to be kind to me. There's a, a woman that works the sound system at Doc and she told me, if you're not done by 1130, I'm turning it off because we need to be at lunch by 12. And I thought, wow, <laughs> Abraham at 75 wasn't worried about his lunch. He didn't even worry about where he was living. He stepped out into chaos. Pretty amazing. Moses, another guy who uh, was leading his people, but his people were in slavery. And God said, let's get out of this mess and go into chaos. And you remember what happened as he led his people out. Those people, they were bellyaching about that, weren't they? At least back in slavery, we, we knew where our food was coming from. We knew what was going to happen. They complained because they didn't like the chaos. But how God used Moses to pull this thing back together. The prophet Isaiah, I often think of this one. When God reveals himself to him, and, and Isaiah is like, holy, holy, I'm in the presence of Almighty God. I'm a man of unclean lips. So what happens? A seraph goes and gets a hot coal from the fire and puts it on his lips. Can you imagine that? I'd be freaking out. That kind of chaos. You know, how is this going to get me to where I want to go? Isaiah's like, well, I guess I'm just going to have to do this. And it's just amazing um, that he did that. Peter and the disciples, who Jesus came to, to teach. Jesus just got finished um, a very important sermon. 
And he looks at Peter and says, let's put out in the, the deep. Let's go fishing. Can you imagine Peter, a professional fisherman? And Jesus saying, let's go out fishing. And he said, Lord, I fished all day, all night, and we didn't catch anything. The fields are barren, right? You know, I don't know if I'd take kindly if Jesus came and told me how to take care of my plants. I'd be like, no, 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 I, I got this. I know what I'm doing here. I've been doing it for a long time. But Peter said, no. But at your bidding, because you asked, I'm going to do it. And then they caught so many fish that the nets were breaking and the boats began to sink. So you had to call their friends, bring your boats by. Into chaos. But how cool how God used that chaos to get his work done. Well, how are we involved in this whole thing to help God make order out of our chaos? How do we get involved in this process? Well, in this scripture from Matthew, which our Sunday school class just somehow finished at this. Tell me that was an, an act of God, a goosebump moment. Well, anyhow, he says in there that seek first the kingdom of God. We talked in Sunday school about that. It's an attitude. No matter how chaotic your world, your world is now, how, how nutty it is, seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things are going to fall into place. God will make order out of this chaos. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, I'm a pretty unorganized person. And I really have trouble focusing a lot. And we talked about that in Sunday school, too, how the, the Lord's Prayer sometimes helps us to focus. And it really does. I, I do that all the time. And I'm right now, I'm saying to myself, focus, focus. So I need to focus here. And what really helps me is this other uh, scripture uh, that Jesus said in, in Matthew. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And in my life, I think about this constantly. When I'm going crazy, my mind's all over the place. Thinking, ah, there's three categories here. There's my heart, my soul, and my mind. Now, I might, you might disagree with me, but this is how I'm thinking where our hearts are. Our hearts are something that is who you are, who you were raised to be. In your heart, you have stuff that your parents and your grandparents put in there. It's who you are. But it's also your skills, your abilities. Um, that's all part of who you are and part of that heart. And of course, God wants that heart. He wants us to use our skills and abilities to stand up here and sing in worship. So we have our heart. But then we also have our soul. And that's really what God's after, our soul, which is our spirituality, our deep beliefs, our faith our soul, but that's also what the devil's after, after our souls. So we got to be careful. And then the third one that I wanted to talk more about is our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And the mind, the mind, that is the devil's playground. And that's what we have more control of more than anything, but also the devil can control more than anything, is our mind, where that goes and where that takes us. Jesus spent a lot of time here talking about worry. Maybe I'm the only one here that worries about stuff. But sometimes, I, I often say people, I'm part of the 3, 3 a.m. club. I don't know why it is, 3 o'clock, and it's almost exactly 3 o'clock. Because I, I look and I'm like, oh, three o'clock. The worries come in and they just take over. And, and it's just the little worries in the day at 3 a.m. just are horrible. They take over. And I often thought, I heard a sermon one time and they said, well, of course. Because your mercies, your grace is new every day. 
And by 3 a.m., your day is pretty much used up, so your mercy's used up. Praise God that at 6 a.m. or whenever you wake up, your mercies are new again. And to me, that stuff I was so worried about at 3 a.m., it's not quite a big deal at 6. But take advantage of that. Our mercies are new. Our minds are what is controlling that. Well, how do we help control our minds? Philippians, it says, pray always. Pray when you're happy, pray when you're sad, pray when you're anxious, pray when you don't want to pray. I don't know, do you ever get to the point where you can't pray? And you better call somebody up and have them pray for you. Pray, because that helps you to refocus. Pray, and pray specifically. Now, one of the things that I think um, we have as Christians in our toolbox that we don't use very much at all And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. I was so glad to see that on some of these songs here today that talk about the Spirit. Because that's something Jesus gave to us that's very practical and we can use every day. The Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Now, it reminds me of an old Vacation Bible School song that I forgot, so I I wrote them down here. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How do we use these tools? I got a problem with high cholesterol. I've had for a couple years. I'm trying not to take medicine for it, but maybe I'm heading that direction. But I also have a problem with donuts, especially cream donuts. Now, I can eat one And I can forgive myself for that. But if there's a couple left in the box, I'm terrible. And it's, I'll just take a bite of one of these. And then it's like, yeah, you can't have a donut there with a bite in it. So you're going to take another one. And then there's an uneven number and there's one donut left. And I need to, I need to pray for self-control. My worry about my high cholesterol could be solved if I just had a little self-control. The doctor tells me this every time I go there. Well, if you just ate a little better. So I pray for self-control. That's what I mean by being specific. Pray for self-control. How about driving? I don't know if you guys have been down Route 73. That's where I came up this morning from Skipack through Schwanksville. And the road is all torn up. I guess they're getting ready to repave it. So I'm doing that all the way up here. And I got an old van that bounces all over the place. I get a stop sign and I just look in my mirror and the guy behind me is doing one of these things. So he catches my eye thing and he does this. I'm like... I guess I was going too slow. I don't know. My kids, whenever we go somewhere, they say, let mom drive because we want to get there. I, I don't know. I just like doing the speed limit and looking at the cows and the trees. And um, I guess I was doing that. Maybe I was you know, thinking a little bit about what I was going to say this morning. But uh, and then he stops next to me at the stoplight and just gives me one of these like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> But then I'm reminded of the fruit of the Spirit, kindness, gentleness. So I can just smile and, hi, (laughs) how about you roll along? (laughs) Not quite there yet. (laughs) But pray specifically at the moment that you need it. And seek first the kingdom of God. Now, another one of the uh, things here is patience. And that's a sermon in itself. So ah, watch praying for patience. Because you see in the Bible and too many times in my life when I said, Lord, I need to be patient here, he just puts, puts me through a test. So be careful of that one. But take a good look. If you have a chance in Galatians 5, look at these fruits of the Holy Spirit. And when you're praying, know that Jesus gave us these things as our tools to help us in this chaotic world to pull some kind of order 
and pull some kind of sense in here. So seek first the kingdom of God and organize yourself, your mind, your soul. I'm sorry, I did that backwards. Your heart, your soul, and your mind. And you know that God wants to use you to get his work done. He wants to use you to bring some kind of order in our chaotic world, in our chaotic families. He wants us to start pulling this thing all together. But if we seek first his kingdom, hold on to our hearts, spend time on our spirituality, knowing that there's an enemy trying to mess this whole thing up, and your mind, do all you can to pray yourself through this chaotic world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, for your words here. And even as we went over it in Sunday school, it, it seems so challenging and uh, it's so much. But maybe if we just took it uh, a chunk at a time, maybe we just work on our hearts when we need to work on our soul when we need to, and oh my Lord, work on our minds. Help us to use the tools you gave us, the knowledge that you died and, and forgave us of our sins and gave us everlasting life, the knowledge of that, the knowledge of this Holy Spirit that has given us these fruits that we need to feed to ourselves and feed to our world and, and those people around us. Help us, Lord, to see that we have a part in this, and you have given us the tools and the abilities to get your will done in our world. Thank you so much for all this, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.